Good morning on uh, today's YouTube video. We're going to talk to Margaret Hall about her spotlight exhibition in Calgary of summer florals. We've never had anything like this before in the shop and it has been really fun to uh, learn all about the hats. Good morning, Margaret. Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I'd like to talk about what inspired you to make this huge body of work of hats. <laughs> well, I've always enjoyed hats and uh, my mother always wore a hat when she went into town and she was uh, able to do millinery. And um, it was when I inherited her hat block uh, which was a 21 inch circumference, so it's a quite a small head she had. Um, I started to make hats that I made from my own handmade felt. And when COVID happened and I couldn't do the costume design course I really wanted to do, um, I went online and I found this milliner in Yorkshire who I took a two year millinery course with over Zoom. I was able to send pieces to her to check out and it worked very, very well. And I've since visited her and had an in-studio tutorial. I need to back it up. What's a hat block? A hat block is one of these things that you... Um, everything's falling down. So this is a Trilby hat block. And it, the reason it's covered with the, the uh, saran wrap is because we want to protect the wood so that I can use it for many, many times. So basically, um, a hat is blocked on a wooden block, or you can use metal blocks if you're doing a lot of production. But I hand black block mine on, on wooden blocks, and I have various styles of blocks. So I choose the block according to the style of hat that I wish to make. And I also have this, uh, I brought this band block too, which are very popular in, um, in Britain. And... Uh, the materials that you use um, determine how you make the hat. So if I was making a trilby, I'd actually have to make it in three parts unless I was using a felt hood. But this display is a summer hat collection, so I've used cinnamon and straw and some buckram that um, I can also block. So I bought samples of that. So the cinnamon <laughs> is this. all bounce <laughs> yeah the cinema is this um banana plant type fabric that comes from the philippines and you need to layer it up you need to use three layers of this so it, it, you use quite a lot of fabric and it's impregnated with some glue um sometimes you have to put some more on to make a very stiff brim if you don't want it to bend um so you have to manipulate it uh, carefully um once it's wet it can be stretched and blocked over a block. This is buckram, and that's a cotton fabric that is impregnated with glue, and you have to layer it with two layers. Very uh, stiff. Um, yeah, it's very stiff. If you look at... So you buy this already colored, or is it? Um, the, the buckram is either in black or in white. This is cinnamon, this one. And I just brought this, this is um, an unfinished hat that I was trying some uh, printing techniques on. Um, unsuccessfully with this particular one but you can see it's sort of squishy and mo mobile so I would actually have to put a wire in here so I've got some millinery wire here um, fairly stiff wire you can feel oh, and it's coated it in fabric and it's got a, um, a fabric cotton fabric coating and I would make I would block the wire onto the block and then I would stitch it so you have another block that's like I have another dome? block that's like that okay um, so all of my hats are hand stitched everything is hand stitched and all of the trims are handmade and I was just um, I brought this piece which is a buckram piece and it's covered with silk but it's covered with um, a soft fabric called Demet first and that's stitched on the wires stitched in and then the the top cover of silk is stitched on. But I was, I was <laughs> amused by the fact that the trim took me, it's only a tiny trim really, but it took me longer to create the trim than it did to create the hat. And yet the trim is actually quite a, an important part of a piece. And I make all my flowers, um, 
So all my trims uh, are handmade. So I can make cinema trims, something that would just sit on the top of a hat, something like that. Oh, fun. Right, so I could do, you know, asymmetrical pieces. I chose to do flowers, and these are all handmade flowers that are on my... Um, and what is this silk. made out of? This is uh, Dupont silk. And uh, it's a little bit stiff. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I stiffen the silk, and sometimes I have to hand dye it. Sometimes I want to get a, a really even dye, but sometimes I like to put different, you know, just not quite dye it very evenly, um, because it just gives a more natural look of the flower. If you have a little bit of a discrepancy in the color, um, it can just uh, lighten it a bit. So I stiffen the silk with, um, this is stiffened silk with 50% uh, water, 50% PVA glue. Um, and you just let, soak it and let it dry. And then you use these tools, which are heated. So they're heated tools that there's, I have various sizes of this ball. And this is a, a petal turner. So, to so just these do. are specifically tools for millinery work? They're, they're tools for flower making. Oh. So um, in the past, um, flowers were made by whole families. And especially in England at the time before Ascot occurred, um, these families would make flowers all day long and then the milliners would purchase the handmade flowers from those ladies and gentlemen and children. So you're um, making all the components of your hats? Yes, I, I purchased the fabrics, um, but sometimes I have to dye the fabrics to this, a certain colour um, if I want to. Um, but I am making, hand making all the components. Um, so I'm hand stitching. This is actually this, this piece. That it's small, uh, but mighty, I think. Um, it has, it's wired so that I can change the curve if I want, or um, certainly... It's beautiful. With the, um, with the silk flowers, they're on a wire, and then you would... These don't go together very well, but you would put them together and bind them together into an arrangement before you would then place it on the hat and stitch it to the hat. I stitch my um, flowers on because then you can cut it off and if you wanted to change the trim, you could, right? Uh, whereas if you use a lot of glue, you can't do that. So you're a member of Contextual and you're doing yes. an art residency in the summer at yes. AU Arts. Yeah. Um, are you going to be working on hats there or is there <laughs> another project in mind? There's another project in mind which is a felting one, but I also I'd like to improve my, felt, my uh, printing skills. So I've been doing some uh, screen printing and I'd like to uh, maybe incorporate some of that into my hat making. I have tried a few pieces. I have some, ha well, a couple of hats that were successful. But one of the things that is difficult, you can see with this one, is that I, I did print something onto here. But when I actually started to create the hat, because it's a wet process, the inks I used were wearing off, it, they were just rubbing off. So I think the process that I would need to do is probably um, dyeing the, fibre, the, the uh, fabric, not just putting a surface print on. It would have to penetrate the fibre. So, but it's, it's fun to experiment. <laughs> and I could always cover this with you know, a firm fabric too. So the hat inspiration came from your mother, but what about all of the other fibre? What interests you in, in I just, textile? It's the tactile thing. It's the, it's the smell of wool. I love working with wool, and I like doing felt hats, and I um, would like to improve my felting skills to make my felt more like the hats that were felted prior to industrialization. Um, but that's a whole process, and some of those techniques have been lost um, because we went to industrialization. Um, but I, I've always been taught, to, I, at early age, I've always been taught to knit and crochet and make lace and tat and a lot of those crafts and felt making came later in life and so did millinery. Um, but it, I think it's the actual handling of things, that the, the feel of silk, the feel of wool yes. um, is something that well, let's get Melanie important. to come in and have a closer look at some of the hats that you've brought in the Summer Floral Series. Um, so I guess we'll start here maybe on the top. 
So we have a series, and this is your Canada Day collection. This is my Canada Day collection. And what was important to me was to use the same template for the maple leaf in silk, leather, and in cinema, and give the hat a different look. Um, so this is buckram covered with um, leather, and then leather and wired um, maple leaves. And these are silk maple leaves that I dyed to make them look a little more autumn-like, actually, for a summer floral exhibition. Very appropriate. Um, but I liked the whole sort of idea of them cascading, and they look more like the dried leaves of, of the fall. Um, well, they sure would be fun to show yeah. up at the uh, July 1st with your maple leaf. Yeah. And the, this is a little bit of gold veiling that I felt made it uh, me think of fireworks and the display that we usually have on, on Canada Day. So where would you wear a hat like this? Or like now looking down at these other more, I don't know, they might have a name of what kind of hats are these? Well, I, I tend to call them headpieces okay. um, so that they're not considered sun hats. Um, they're, they're headpieces, they're decorative pieces. Um, they're something to wear on a formal occasion or a fun occasion um, where you want to um, present yourself um, as beautifully as you can. And I think when you wear a headpiece, you tend to move more differently. It makes you taller. <laughs> you feel taller if you're in a hat or a headpiece. Um, and there's a lot of people who call, you know, there's a lot of words for these headpieces, fascinators, perchers, percherberries. And so I've just elected to call them headpieces because they're basically eye candy for your head. <laughs> they are, they're beautiful, yeah. This really hot pink one, it has a wider brim on it. What's the mm -hmm. name of that one? Uh, this, this one, this, yeah. this is a hat. It's a shallow crowned hat um, and it's actually a paper. Um, it's made out of paper. So um, the, the, the thing I like about this is that um, this is hand pleated, the Petersham brim. So I, I pleated this and stitched it so that it doesn't fall apart. And um, I think that's a technique that adds something extra to the hat. The flowers are certainly beautiful on that one. Yes, the, the, the silk actually really picks out the pink. The pink picks out the, the yeah. pink in the silk. Um, so that's... That's a paper hood. So I buy the hood and then I have to shape it up. And over here on this side, I noticed on the tags that you have with, uh, the, some of these are reproductions uh, of <laughs> hats and it looks like you found them in the Red Deer Museum, your hometown. Yeah, the, the Red Deer Museum has been very kind to me and allowed me to um, examine their hat collection. And uh, I want to go in and do more. Um, so some of the hats uh, I have looked at um, there, some, some of the veiling is always a bit tatty, so you kind of have to, it's a bit of guesswork, how would this work at the time? And um, ladies wore veils quite close to their faces in the past, although now ladies prefer the veil, a bit of veiling or a veil further away from their face. Um, so I picked these from the 50s because I was born in the 50s. And um, this is a, a more formal headpiece, and it was originally in black, but because I was doing this, I chose this color palette, I changed it to red. Um, and this piece I found quite fascinating, and especially to me it was quite fascinating to see the fixings, because the, um, the wire is an integral part of the hat, and then the pieces are brought down to, to fit on, on the head. And I'd only previously done um, fixings like this where you actually make a band and then insert it into the hat. So I've learned a lot and I hope to learn a lot more from past hat making. Um, Maybe your next deep dive is into all the photographs that are collected in yes. archives everywhere. Yes, I did actually find a, 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 an exact photograph of this piece so it must have been a popular style at the time. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah. Well Margaret, thank you for coming in today and talking to us about your hats. Um, if you're uh, watching this uh, in, the, in the current moment, uh, it is um, on display here till the end of July. So please pop by the uh, Alberta Craft Gallery in Calgary and take a look at Margaret's beautiful summer florals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>